So for number three, um, we do have that a set B is ordinary if it does not contain itself. So for example, uh, if B is the set of all chairs, then B does not belong to B because B is not a chair. Um, and so there are many such types of ordinary sets that do not contain themselves. So now let's consider this set, uh, capital X. And capital X is defined in such a way that um, its elements are X such that X is an ordinary set. An ordinary set. So if it is set, it is a set that does not contain itself, for example, um, the set of all people, then uh, it is contained in capital X. So now the question is, um, is capital X an ordinary set? That is, the question, does X belong to X? So to answer this, we have to consider two situations, right? Uh, the first situation, oops, the first situation that we're going to consider is one where, um, where X is ordinary. So, if X is ordinary, it means that um, X does not contain, does not contain X. So that's what it means for it to be ordinary. However, if it is ordinary, then it does fit the property for it to be contained in X. Because um, X is just a set of all sets that do not contain themselves. So if it is ordinary, it does not contain itself. But because it is ordinary, it does contain itself. So it does mean that X belongs to X, which is clearly a contradiction, right? Um, so that's no good. Now let's consider the second situation. Oops. The second situation here where um, X is not ordinary. That implies that X contains itself, right? Um, but if X contains itself, then itself cannot be in X because remember that X is only the set of those sets that do not contain themselves. So if X contain itself, it actually cannot contain itself. And so we have X uh, contains X and X does not contain X. So that is a contradiction either way. Um, and so the conclusion here should be, it asks, what should we say about the collection of all ordinary sets? And what we can say is that the collection of all ordinary sets is not a set, right? It's not properly defined because then we get these contradictions. Um, so that is it for item A. And for item B, we have that. So for item B, um, in a town, there's a barber who shaves all the men and only the men who do not shave themselves, right? So let's A, let A be the set of all people, so of all people such that P does not, does not shave P. So all the set of people such that they do not shave themselves, right? Um, and then it's ask, it asks who shaves the barber, right? That is, is the barber an element of A or is he not an element of A? So let's consider two cases. One, that the barber belongs to set A, right? If the barber belongs to set A, it means that the barber does not shave himself, right? But if he does not shave himself, remember that the barber shaves all the men who do not shave themselves. So if he does not shave himself, right, then the barber shaves himself because he shaves all the men who do not shave themselves. So if B belongs to A, um, it means then that B does not belong to A because then he shaves himself. So that is a contradiction. And similarly, if uh, B is not an element of A, if he, uh, if he does not shave himself, right? Or rather, if he does shave himself, so he's not an element of A, if he does shave himself, um, well, then he is shaving himself, but he only shaves people who do not shave themselves. So he cannot shave himself, and therefore he is an element of A. 
he is in A, right? So we can see here that it's the same paradox, and therefore um, there's no conclusion to this, right? So this is what is called the self-referential paradox or Russell's paradox.